Films from the gun cameras of 8th Air Force fighter planes showed destruction of enemy air opposition over the Western Front. trains and other ground objectives. A pickaback plane is caught on the ground. Of pickaback planes on the way toward the Allied lines are intercepted by P 51s of the 8th Air Force. The pickabacks are a combination of a Focke Wolf 190 fighter on top of a Junkers 88 twin engine bomber. The bomber is filled with high explosive and released near the target like a bomb. The Focke Wolf 190 controls the flight of both planes, each of which provides its own power. Fighter squadron discovers an enemy airfield covered with planes. The strike systematically destroys every single plane. Preliminary to the 21st Army Group's Northern Rhine crossings, Field Marshal Montgomery confers with Lieutenant General Simpson of the 9th Army and Major General Anderson, 16th Corps Commander. Extensive preparations and training precede the Anglo-American offensive. Bailey Bridge equipment, collapsible boats, rafts, pontons, all earmarked for a Rhine assault, are stacked up in a forest clearing. This bridging dump is maintained by Canadian units awaiting the signal to commence operations against the Reich River barrier. At Maastricht, Holland, LCMs brought down the canal from Antwerp are loaded onto M25 trailers for transportation to the bridgehead sector. American and British naval forces have chosen the LCM and LCVP as suited to Army requirements and capable of being transported overland. Alligators also are delivered for rehearsing troops of the 30th Division, 9th Army. The Meurs River is used for Army-Navy training. Instead of operating craft of this type through waves and surf, seamen must learn to maneuver them to and from pinpoint landing spots in currents ranging from six to 10 knots. Boats must be launched from muddy river banks instead of ship's davits. Operations for the airborne operations coordinated with the amphibious assault. Elements of the first Allied Airborne Army drill in France ten days before Lieutenant General Brereton's aerial task forces converge on the Rhine. Twenty fourth March. The actual crossing of the Rhine already is in full swing. Men of the 30th Division are taken over in LCVPs. General Simpson's forces make the southernmost crossing below Vesel. Farther north, Lieutenant General Dempsey's British 2nd Army and Canadian troops are strengthening the bridgehead on the Westphalian Plain. Army engineers and Navy crews cooperate for these crossings. The engineers launch the craft and furnish guides, and the sailors operate them, applying lessons learned in weeks of practice. 
A jeep with ammunition trailer comes ashore, followed by reinforcements of all types for advance elements moving beyond the east bank of the Rhine. Operations are reported leading according to plan, with our troops well into the first German defensive positions north of the Ruhr. First glider landings near Brunnen, Germany, in the Wesel area on the Rhine's far bank. Coming in after Marshal Montgomery's columns have been launched across the Rhine, these units have the immediate objective of seizing high ground around Wesel. A junction with the American and British troops is made six hours after the airborne troops commence to land. To the south, the 4th Armored Division, spearheading General Patton's Rhine push, passes liberated forced laborers. The disorder of the German retreat is made evident by groups of Nazis giving themselves up without offering resistance. This dash by the 4th Armored precedes the final battle for the Tsar Mosel Rhine Triangle and 3rd Army crossings of the Rhine. The town of Weissenturm, Germany, is littered with equipment of every description, abandoned by the Nazis as they were backed up to the river. A preponderance of horses, dead and alive, adds to the scene of confusion. Disorder at the Rhine Bank, where Nazi stragglers wait to be moved to prisoner cages. The 4th Armored alone captures more than 4,000 prisoners in its drive through the West German hills. Meanwhile, 1st Army artillery shells the town of Hornigen, Germany, across the Rhine. This is in support of an infantry division moving along the east bank from the Remagen bridgehead, seven miles north. On 16th March, a treadway bridge is used by troops consolidating positions across the Rhine. General Hodge's army, driving for the central German plain, also employs Navy craft to move up reinforcements. LCVPs transport men of the 1st Infantry Division to Scheuren, Germany, northeast of Remagen. Sailors of Navy units attached to the 1st Army operate the craft. The Navy began operations in this area 48 hours after the Army's seizure of the Ludendorff Bridge. In addition, supplies are ferried across the Rhine in ducks. Two amphibious truck companies, one a Negro outfit, man the amphibious vehicles on the runs to and from Unkel, Germany. Prisoners of war and empty gasoline containers are carted by the ducks on their return trips. The Ludendorff Bridge across the Rhine at Remagen. For 10 days, it withstands aerial attacks and constant artillery fire while 1st Army troops exploit the initial breaching of the Rhine River line. Traffic in the face of the attacks must be kept to proper intervals between vehicles. A convoy of Patton equipment is ready to be unloaded for engineer battalions who begin construction despite the enemy raids. Normally a 34-hour job, bridging operations are hours behind as Nazi fire flares up repeatedly. Under heavy enemy fire, combat engineers out on the incompleted span dash back to shore. Despite these attacks, the first Ponton Bridge is completed and handling heavy traffic on 14th March. Armor is raced across the new link as the Remagen Bridgehead begins expanding into a wide front. Both the Ponton Span and the adjacent Ludendorff Bridge are still under enemy fire. The engineer battalion working on the Ludendorff strengthens the roadbed, which was improvised to allow vehicles to travel over the railway ties. Damaged structural members of the bridge are removed by engineers. 
But weakened by the cumulative damage, the Ludendorff collapses on 17th March while about 300 engineer troops are working on it. Many of them are hurled into the swift icy water or crushed by the falling structure. Rescue crews save those who managed to cling to sections of the span as it gave way. Rescuers swim out into the Rhine to reach injured men kept afloat by driftwood. bringing out a line to pull in the surviving engineers. Quick action of this type saves many lives. When the 512-foot center span of the Ludendorff gave way, there was no vehicular traffic crossing the bridge. Crews extricate bodies pinned beneath the heavy beams. Three days later, on 20th March, Supreme Headquarters announces that the collapsed Ludendorff Bridge has been abandoned. The dispatch says that the span is no longer necessary because of the existence of other facilities across the Rhine into the Remagen Bridgehead. films of the jet-propelled Gloucester Meteor, British counterpart of the American jet plane, the P-80 Shooting Star. The Meteor, powered by two Rolls-Royce engines, was first used to combat Nazi robot bombs. Although still in the early stages of experimentation, the plane has proved to be faster than the 500-mile-an-hour buzz bombs. Smooth running, easy to fly, and practically noiseless, the Meteor leaves almost no trail of smoke. Known as the squirt by RAF pilots, the plane climbs like an elevator and increases its speed in high altitudes. from the gun cameras of 8th Air Force fighter planes showed destruction of enemy air opposition over the Western Front. its own power. The back plane is caught on the ground. A group of pickaback planes on the way toward the Allied lines are intercepted by P-51s of the 8th Air Force. The pickabacks are a combination of a focke 190 fighter on top of a Junkers 88 twin-engine bomber. The bomber is filled with high explosive and released near the target like a bomb. <laughs> 